ഹിമനശ്ശൈത്തനുറജീമ സമവാദിയോലിഹിമിഷ്കിസ്ബ ഫിജുജുജുക്കൂക്കുന്ദുറിയുഹദുമീൻ ഷജറത്തിൻ്റെ <coughs> 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 ഫിയ ബിൽ 
asali rijal rijalul la tulhim tijaratu wa la bay'un an dhikrillah رجال لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع ولا بيع عن ذكر الله وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء زكات يخافون يوما يخافون يوما تتقلب فيه القلوب والأبصار ليجزيهم الله أحسن ما عملوا ويزيدهم من فضله والله يرزق من يشاء بغير حساب صدق الله العظيم الفاتحة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله السلام عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين وابن سيد الوسيين السلام عليك يا ابن فاطمة سيدة النساء العالمين السلام عليك يا ثار الله وابن ثاره والوتر الموتور السلام عليك وعلى الأرواح التي هلت بفنائك عليكم مني جميعا سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبغي الليل والنهار يا أبا عبد الله لقد أدمت البذية وجلت وأزمت المسيبة بك علينا وعلى جميع أهل الإسلام وجلت وأزمت مسيبتك في السماوات على جميع أهل السماوات ولعن الله أمة أسست أساس الظلم والجور عليكم أهل البيت ولعن الله أمة دفعتكم عن مقامكم أزلتكم عن مراتبكم التي رتبكم الله فيها ولعن الله أمة قتلتكم ولعن الله موحدين لهم بالتمكين من قتالكم فرئت إلى الله وإليكم منهم ومن أشائهم وأتباعهم وأوليائهم يا أبا عبد الله إني سلم لمن سالمكم حرب لمن هاربكم إلى يوم القيامة لعن الله آل زياد وآل مروان لعن الله بني أمية قاتبة لعن الله ابن مرجانة لعن الله مر ابن ساد لعن الله شما لعن الله أمة أسرجت وألجمت وتنقبت بقتالك يبي أنت وأمي لقد أزمى بسابي بك فأسأل الله الذي أكرم مقامك وأكرمني بك عين يرزقني ترى بثارك ما إمام منصور من أحد بيت محمد صلى الله عليه وآله اللهم اجعلني عندك وجيها بالحسين عليه السلام في الدنيا والآخرة يا أبا عبد الله إني أتقرب إلى الله وإلى رسوله وإلى أمير المؤمنين وإلى فاطمة 
وإدال حسني وإليك بموالاتك وبالبراعات ممن أسس أسست ذلك وبنى عليه بنيانه وجري في ظلمه وجوره عليكم وعلى أشائكم برئت إلى الله وإليكم منهم وتقربوا إلى الله ثم إليكم بموالاتكم وموالات وليكم وبالبراءة من أعدائكم والناس بين لكم الخربة وبالبراءة من أشائهم وأتباعهم إني سلم لمن سالمكم وحرب لمن حاربكم وولي لمن والاكم معدوب لمن آداكم فأسأل الله الذي أكرم أكرم مني ك بمعرفتكم ومعرفتي أوليائكم رزقني البراءة من أعدائكم أن يجعلني معكم في الدنيا والآخرة وأن يثبت لي عندكم قدم صدق في الدنيا والآخرة وأسألوه أن يبلغ المقام المحمود لكم عند الله وأن يرزقني ترب ثاري ما إمامي هدى داهر الناتق الحق منكم وأسأل الله بحقكم وبشأن الذي لكم عنده أن يأتيان بمساب بكم أفضل ما يأتي مسابا بمسيبتي مسيبة ما أعظمها وأعظم رضيتها في الإسلام وفي جميع السماوات والأرض اللهم اجعلني في مقام هذا ما من تناله منك سلوات ورحمة ومغفرة اللهم اجعل محياي محيا محمد وآل محمد ومماتي ممات محمد وآل محمد اللهم إن هذا يوم تبركت به ابن مية وابن كلات الأكباد اللين اللين على لسانك ولسان نبيك صلى الله عليه وآله في كل موت من موقف وغفافه نبيك صلى الله عليه وآله اللهم لأن أبا سفيان ومعاوية ويزيد ابن معاوية عليه منك زعمة عبد الآبدين وهذا يوم فرحت به آل زياد وآل مروان بقتلهم الحسين صلوات الله عليه اللهم فدائف عليهم اللعن منك والأداب الأليم اللهم أن يتقرب إليك في هذا اليوم وفي موقف هذا أيام حياة بالبراءة منهم لعنة عليهم بالموالاة لنبيك وعلى نبيك عليه وعليكم السلام اللهم لأن أول ضان من ضان حق محمد وعلى محمد وآخر تاب له على ذلك اللهم لأن الأنساب التي جاهد الحسين عليه السلام وشايت وبايت وتابت على قتله اللهم عنهم جميعا السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي هلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله بدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جاء الله آخر لحن مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين ولا علي بن الحسين ولا أولاد الحسين ولا أصحاب الحسين اللهم خص أنت أول ذار من باللعن مني ورد به أولا ثم لأن الثانية والثالثة والرابعة اللهم أن يزيد, أن يزيد خامسا ولا بيد الله ابن زياد وابن ماجانة ومر ابن سعد بن شما ولا أبي سفيان وآل زياد وآل مروان إلى يوم القيامة سجدة اللهم لك الحمد حمد الشاكرين لك على مسابهم الحمد لله على ذم الرضية اللهم ارزقنا شفاعة الحسين يوم ورودي ثبت لقد مصدق عندك مع الحسين أصحاب الحسين الذين بذل محاجهم دون الحسين عليه السلام صلوات السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله السلام عليك وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين 
صلى الله عليكم جميعا يا ليتنا كنا معكم فنفوز فوزا عظيما الان now we go to the lecture by سيد علي عباس رضوي ان شاء الله قاسم محمد وعلى ال بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين الذين ذهب الله عنهم وجزا وطهرهم تطهيرا اما بعد قال الله الحكيم في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل محمد وعلي محمد our series of discussions have gone into its fourth night as these nights begin to leave us build inside of yourself a connection a connection that illuminates the heart the purpose of these 10 nights are that there are 10 sections of iman belief and as each day begins to go your heart should be inclining towards the wilaya of the prophet and his family know something there is no other pathway to perfection but that of the prophet and his family there are pathways there are maratib stages but the absolute stage of perfection that completes the entire cycle of the names that brings together to a level of maqam tam the only thing there is is that of the wilaya ahlul bayt why as we said yesterday now when i say ahlul bayt Ahlul Bayt in the absolute sense is the Prophet and his family. Ahlul Bayt is not separate from the Prophet and his family. Ahlul Bayt is one unit. Where do we see this unit? Look, you've heard the story before. But hear it from me as well. The story goes like this. A number of days ago, before the beginning of Muharram, there's an event that you all come and celebrate. And that is the final Eid that you have. And that's known as Mubahila. in that eid what do you have you have a group that goes from yemen and comes to medina with two purposes either convert them or then say to them that we're not going to make peace effectively in the process of all of that a dialogue breaks out from that dialogue it reaches a dead end when it reaches a dead end hukum of allah comes that was there's no rational method this way or that way final method is this mubahila in the process of mubahila the najranis go back to their three khalifas so there were three leaders basically according to the tafasir they go back to three of those leaders and they ask them they say to them look should we go and do mubahila with this muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam allahu muhammad up to that you know after that they reply something or at least the head from the three leaders the main leader replies something he says look do mubahila with them on the condition that if he brings his friends and everyone else then do mubahila with them but if he brings a distinct group of people then don't do mubahila with them then you know that he's on the truth what happens hukum comes down wa abna'ana wa abna'akum You bring three sons or more. Wa nisa'ana wa nisa'akum. You bring three women or more. Wa anfusana wa anfusakum. You bring your souls. I'll bring or we bring our souls. What happened? In all of that, hukum of the Quran is there. But who does the prophet bring? There is no three or three or three. Who does the prophet bring? 
The prophet brings his sons, but there are only two. That indicates that if there was anybody else at that maqam, he would have bought it. Who does he bring as women? When the de- discussion and the debate takes place, are the wives of the Prophet part of Ahlul Bayt? Had they been part of Ahlul Bayt, Rasulullah would have bought them in Nisa'ana wa Nisa'akum. Who does he bring? Here the Quran says plural, three. Or more. Who does he bring? One. When it comes to his nafs, nafsullah, nafs of the Prophet, who does he bring? One. You know up to there. So now listen forward and say. A dialogue then takes place. So these Najranis go back to the Khalifa. The three Khalifas who are there. Three leaders. Ask them the question. He says, what should we do? Who has Muhammad bought? He's bought two of his grandsons. He's bought his daughter. And he's bought his nafs, which is his son-in-law. Look at their istidlal. Forget ours. Look at this. Look at the way they have ma'rifah more than some of our brothers have ma'rifah. What, is, what, is, what do they reply? He says, Muhammad has bought every one of his family, from the youngest to the oldest. That means that he believes in his message. Because he knows that if he was to lie, the entire nusl of prophecy would be finished forever. Now remember, at this time, the Prophet outwardly, according to the Najranis, hadn't selected a leader. But it is the Abrahamic tradition, from the time of Abraham, that every Prophet picks a family member. It is either his brother or his cousin, or his son. So in this way, who does a prophet bring? His cousin, his brother, his son. So according to them, what the prophet was saying that we are from the branch of Ibrahim, for them, this is the succession to Muhammad. So at that stage, he then turns around and says, well, listen, if Muhammad has bought only these people, therefore, if they curse, he has yaqeen that they're going to win. Don't do, wabahala with them. This is the belief, and this is the iman, of a person who's not a Muslim. Now let me ask you a question. Muslims, where have you gone wrong? Shall I put it another way? Those five people who are coming, they were Islam. If there was anything more superior than them, the Prophet would have bought them. This isn't belittling anybody else. Everybody has different maqamat. Everybody has different maqamat. Hadith Kisa takes place. We hold Sayyidah Zainab in the greatest of light. She was alive, but she wasn't under the Kisa. Right? At least physically. Some people say she was born. Others have said she may have been in the womb. But let's take it a step further. Take it a step further and see. In Mubahila, say that Zainab doesn't come. Let's say she was in the womb. So let's say she was spiritually under the Kisa. But let's say now for argument's sake. 10 AH now comes, say the Zainab was there. Umar Kulthum was there, Rasulullah didn't bring them. Why not? They're holy. They look for us. They have isma, right? Minor isma. If not isma to kubra, but the fact is that they don't commit a sin according to us, according to our belief. However, he doesn't bring them. Why? Because the bunyad of Islam are just these five. Just these five. Where the succession of imamat comes is because of two shards. One, Karbala, and one, Ayay Nur. Nurun ala Nur. Nine imams from the Nasr of Hussein. So now let me come back and tell you something. The entire bunyad of Islam, therefore, rests on the Prophet and his family. Your maqam, your enlightenment of the heart, your movement rests on your reflection upon them. Your focus upon them. Let me take it in another direction. Look, what did we conclude on yesterday? We said there is an importance in reading the Quran, which we as Muslims negate. We memorize it, we read it like a parrot, but we don't analyze it. However, you all know that Quran is such, it can be manipulated. Why? Quran is mujmal, is abstract. The purpose of it, because it's a book until the end of time, so it's multi-layered. You could say there are four different distinct levels of the Qur'an where the Amma understand one thing and the Khas understand one thing and the Awliya understand one thing and the Anbiya understand one thing. That's the beauty of the Qur'an. Effectively, every single human who reads the Qur'an understands it in their own way. But if 1.9 billion Muslims understood it in a different way, there'd be anarchy, 
So what do you do? And there is anarchy. You go back to the Ahlul Bayt. So now come and see. The purpose of the Quran, Allah. The purpose of prophecy, Allah. The purpose of Imama, the entire purpose of guidance is that they take you by the hand and take you to Allah. So there's two things that you have that nobody else has. Look into it and see. One is the du'as of the Imam. Two is the ziyarat of the Imam. Why is that? Because the du'a of the Imam teaches you how to supplicate to Allah, how to talk to Allah. Go today to Alam Islam and see. There is hardly any literature that can teach you how to talk to Allah, to explain to you what Tawheed is. How is your relationship? The Quran doesn't teach you a relationship development. It doesn't show you how two people have a conversation. The Prophet of God, his du'as are very limited. Go into Sunni corpus and see. Only a handful of du'a. 2% of what Shia literature is. Today, when you look at Sufi literature, the vast majority of it is found in the Shia books. They've taken it almost from the Imam. In fact, they have taken it from the Sanad goes back to one Imam or the other. Majority goes to the eighth Imam, otherwise the sixth Imam, and so forth. So what are you seeing here? The way to talk to Allah is found in du'a. This is why we said yesterday, there are a number of du'as which are important. But now that you've understood how to connect with your God and talk to your God, remember there's another maqam as well. Why is it important to understand the Imam of your time? Because your Imam is Nurullah on earth. Let me put it another way. Go and see. When you go to the shrine of Amir al muminin and you stand there reciting Ziyarat Amin Allah, which is the most recommended Ziyarat to recite there, or when you go to any shrine, Amin Allah, what do you say? Assalamu alaikum. For every Imam you're saying this, but specifically for Amir al muminin Assalamu alaikum. Ya Nurullah fi dhulamatil ard. Salam on you, basically. Which? Nurullah. The light of Allah which shines upon the darkness of earth. What does that mean? That means wherever there's darkness on earth, the Imam's Nur removes it. Go deeper and see. If you have a vice inside of you that you lie, that is darkness. If you cheat, that is darkness. If you hold bulls, that is darkness. If you're ignorant, that is darkness. What does the Imam therefore do? Imam is that wasila that negates each one of your vices and makes it into a virtue so that you can go to alam illiyin. Here, look, honestly, where, Marif, where do you find Marifat Imam? Today, when you find on your YouTube and across internet, you find those people who are bringing a question mark to Imamat. Why are people becoming misguided? Go and look at what your Imams have written about each other. Go to the Ziyarat and your Ziyarat Jamia Kabira, Ziyarat Aminullah, Ziyarat Ali Yasin. Look at all of these Ziyarat. Look at it and see. They teach you how and which way to connect to the Imam and they teach you what the Imam is. Here in Ziyarat Aminullah, I wish I had time to go through all of it. One single line I've said to you, profound line, Assalamu Alaikum, peace be on you. Salam be on you, Nurullah, Nur of God, Light of God, Fidhulamat al-Ard, that shines upon the darkness on earth, on Alam al madda right? Who is that Imam therefore? That Imam therefore is that Nur, that Allah says, Ayatul Kursi is one of the most powerful verses in the Quran. If a person knew the A'mal of Ayatul Kursi, you could do anything with it. I myself am a witness, maybe one or two of you who are in front of me, a witness to the fact, if you remember a young man in London, everything had passed. So they asked, what should we recite? It was Ayatul Kursi that the father recited a number of times, I won't say the number, that revived him from what the doctor said was an end case. What is this power of Ayatul Kursi? In that, what happens? What does it say? Who is Allah? Allah takes a person from Dhulamat to Nur. But what is the wasila that Allah uses? Because remember, Allah is absolute. Absolute doesn't come down, He uses a medium. That medium is the Nur of Ahl Bayt. Muhammadan Al Muhammad. This is why that Nur was found in Adam. And that Nur was found in Nuh. And that Nur was found in all of the Prophets. Go and see Basayr. What does it say? When that Nur was on the forehead of Adam, the angels wouldn't come towards him. Out of respect, they stood behind him. Adam said to Allah, Allah, why don't the angels come forward? He says, Ahtiram for the light. 
Just Allah, can you help them to come forward? Allah removed the light from his hand, from here to his hand and moved it in front of him. Angels came and aligned with him at that stage. Angels would not move after the entire instant of the sajda and after they came to know the names. And then after Adam was complete, وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكْ صِدْقًا وَعَدْلًا From that day onwards, you look at the angels. When the haqiqah came to them, they don't argue after that. They know what Ahlul Bayt is. And you come to realize that there are people who are with the imams, but the world takes them away from the imam. Shall I give you an example? All of these people that you find, Umar ibn Sa'd, Shimr, who are they? Effectively, and at one stage, they were with Amir al-Mu'mineen in Jamal, in Safin and otherwise. They knew the maqam of the imam. They knew the karamat of the imam. They knew their mukarram. What takes them away? Dunya. Look inside of yourself and see. If today you were in Karbala, honestly speaking, would you be able to give your life for Imam Hussein? Or is it the fact that on a daily basis, you actually remember Imam Hussein? Yes. Or today when Imam Hussein is saying, Halman Nasser, does that actually move your heart? If I said to you, Imam Hussein 1400 years ago said, Halman Nasser yan surana, does that make any sense to you? You know why it doesn't make any sense to you? Because of the world. The world has rumbled your heart in such a way and built so much stains that you could be sitting in a majlis, but you're unable to connect. But you have a child who's sitting there and tears are flowing in the eyes of that child because of the tahara of the qalb of that child, because of the fact that it's not tarnished. You see, that child can reach a maqam that even an adult can't reach. And you know why that is? Because the heart is pure. So the most important thing is this. How do we purify that heart so that we can connect to the light of Allah? What does Sayyidah Zainab say in the court of Yazid? So what does she say to Yazid? You will not extinguish the light of Allah. Why? Because the entire light of Allah was on the shoulders of Zainab. Why was that? Because Imam Hussein said, you're the custodian of this light. And then what happened? She protected this light to make sure Nasla Imamat continues. Today, if that light is on the forehead of the 12th Imam and within the wujud of the 12th Imam, it would not have taken place had it not been for the entrusting of this trust to say the Zainab. This is the beauty. You don't, you, we don't understand these women of Alul, but honestly, we don't. Do you know who Fatima is? Alayhi salam? We don't know who she is. We don't know who she is. This is why the sixth Imam says, to have dark of Fatima is to understand Laylatul Qadr. Why Laylatul Qadr? Because Laylatul Qadr signifies not just the Qadr of Allah, but Qadr from Miqdar, approximation of all of reality. What does Zahra contain? Zahra in a wujud contains Amrullah, Mashiach of Allah. And that is something that's not easy to digest. Why? Because that Mashiach is a part of the Prophet. And the Prophet of God himself says, Fatima to Bada'atun Minni. That part of her wujud, what is Fatima? Ruh of the Prophet. Ruh al-Lati bayna jambayn. What is Ruh? Min Amr Rabbi. What is Ruh? Therefore, the Batin of Nabuwa is Fatima. The Batin of Imamat is Fatima. The Batin of Wilaya is Fatima. Now let me take you to a verse of the Qur'an. Let, understand these things. Understand these things. A person comes, comes running to the 10th Imam. The 10th Imam is in jail in Samarra. Comes to the Imam. He's in jail. Salam on the companions of the Imams. That they ask questions which are still relevant 1400 years later. Otherwise, if they asked only for that time and space, we wouldn't have what we have today. Why? Ahl Marifa. Not all of the companions are Ahl Marifa, but some of them are. This person comes to the Imam, he says, Mola, in Surah Tawbah, there's a particular verse in Surah Tawbah, which talks about the fact that Allah has created these 12 months, of which four of them are holy. And then he continues and he says, He says, what does that mean? Imam looks up and he says, those 12 months are us. Those 12 months of guidance are us. You see, what, does, what are 12 months symbolic of? 12 months represent a cycle of guidance. Life itself. If you fall short with the wilaya of any of these imams, your year and your month is not complete. Then another hadith continues and he says, and if we're 12 months, Rasulullah is the year. You cannot get to Rasulullah 
until you don't get through these 12 months. It is important, therefore, to understand the wilayah of each one of these imams, for you to truly understand the wilayah of the Prophet, for you to go completion, into completion towards Allah. Now let's come to a tradition of the sixth imam. I want you to bear this in mind. I want you to focus. Here another tradition says, that tradition is from Jabir. Who is Jabir? One of the companions of the sixth imam, Sahib al Sir. Now look, there's a particular tradition that I wish I could go through today, where Jabir explains what Ma'rifah is. He explains what Ma'rifah is, Ata'at of the imam is. He also explains to the people what the Fadail of the imam is. All three of these things. But look, if we go into it, the entire one hour is gone. Because it's a deep tradition. I wish I could go into it. But let's go into another tradition. This is that Jabir, who many of the writers of Hadith say was a Ghali. But we take Hadith from him. Because, and again, again this has been raised by certain individuals. You can't take from... No, Ghulu has multiple... They were... Ulu was a political statement. If he wanted to destroy somebody's credibility, he called him a ghali. There are four types of ghalis who exist within our hadith literature. Now again, if I had time, I'd go into it. Maybe tomorrow we'll go into it. Deeper as to what it is. What type of So who do we take from? Well, there are multiple companions of the imams who prayed and they fasted. But remember, in those days, if anybody believed in the primacy of the imam, you would say ghali. According to Sheikh Saduq, all of you sitting here are Ghali. Why? Because Sheikh Saduq gave la'an to a person who recited Ali and Walilla and Awam. So listen. The fact of the matter is this. Don't go according to just a term. Look technically and see what type of ulu they're talking about. Is it inhirafi? Is it aqidati, for example? And look, this isn't the place to raise this. Inshallah, if we have time, I'll go through the entire ilmi rajal as to why ulama take from certain people. But all of our ulama historically have taken from Jabir. Muhammad bin Muslim, Zarara and so forth. There's certain scholars, there's certain companions of the imams were sahib asrar of the imam. Jabir was one of them. Sahib al ard and other karamat that he was given. Anyhow, look, coming to the point. Here Jabir comes to the imam. He says, Mawla, what is this in the Quran when Allah talks about ayyam, the days, that some days may turn and become your enemy. So be vigilant of the days. Imam looks up and says, these days are us. Be very vigilant how you treat us. Be very vigilant how you are. And this is why if you look at hadith, Friday is mansub for the 12th imam. Saturday for the prophet, Sunday for Amir al-Mu'minin and so forth. Some days have more than one imam. Some days have less than, an imam, less than two imams, one imam, two imams, and so forth, three imams. You find the seven days a mansub to each and every imam. This is why when you go into books, what do you find? Ziyara of every imam to recite on a particular day. There's a sir behind that. There's a secret. So the imams are days and the imams are months. But all of those months comes to one reality, which is the haqiqat of Muhammadiyah. Now look, we're going into a deep philosophy here. And I don't really want to go too deeper because I don't want to lose you guys. But what I will do, and if tomorrow you tell me to go deeper, I don't mind going deeper into it. But the fact is, there's a place I want to take you to. That remember, days are guidance. Months are guidance because it's based on the moon. The moon was a guide. The sun was a guide. Stars in the sky for the people of the old were guides. Even to this day, there's some people who pan their life out through the stars, right? So in this way, these were guidances. And here the imam is the absolute sun and the moon. This is why when you look at the Quran, what does Allah use as an example? Why does he say all of these things? Nisbah of the sun and the moon goes back to who? Amir al-Mu'mineen, Rasulullah. So look, these are those maqamat that one has to understand. And what does Jabir here say? It's a very beautiful tradition by him. He says something, he says, look, to understand the fadail of Ahlul Bayt, he asked the sixth imam, he says, this is the way I understand it. The fadail of Ahlul Bayt comes as an ilham to your heart. And the Imam confirms this. That you can only understand the fadail if Allah puts it in your heart. There is no other way of coming to understand the fadail. 
and know something. Ma'rif of Ahlul Bayt is a minna upon you. If you don't do shukr to that minna, what happens? It's taken away from you. The most important thing, therefore, is if a person is not grateful for the wilayah that they have, it will diminish. This is what Amir al-Mu'mineen says. Thank, you get a little bit. But when you thank, you get more. And you get more. And you get more. Because Allah is raziq and is jawad. But the problem is this. That there is a door that requires opening. And that door is the door of shukr. If in every hal you do shukr, shukr and mur'im, then what happens? Doors begin to open towards wilaya. This is what truly wilaya symbolizes. Otherwise, what happens? Otherwise, you find that in your life, there are obstacles and difficulties. I'll give you an example. Abdullah bin Yahya. Abdullah bin Yahya comes in. He sees that there was a chair that Amir al muminin was sitting next to it on the floor. Yahya comes in. Abdullah bin Yahya sits on the chair. As he sits on the chair, all of a sudden he falls. Now how big is a chair? If you fall, what's the worst that's going to happen? Bruised, cracks his head open. Blood begins to flow. He goes, I've fallen from a small distance and this happened. Amir al muminin gets up, starts bandaging his head. He says, and there are some people of my Shia who Allah removes their negativity in this world like this. It purifies them for the hereafter. Why? Even the smallest, even the smallest lack of adab in the maqam of the imam that you give leads to that. What is adab? This is why we bring our children to the majlis. Because we're here to teach them adab. For example, if you're in a majlis and you're on your phone, this is bare adabi. If, God forbid, tomorrow your car crashes, then there's a reason behind that. Phone, you can get up, you can go outside. But in the majlis, there shouldn't be a phone. In the majlis, you should never be sticking your legs out towards qibla or towards the mimbar. For our argument's sake. Because we teach our children this, right? You already know this. But this is something that you need to know. Anyway, so we can pass it on to our nasl. If we can learn adab, for argument's sake here, then what happens? This is a training ground for us to learn adab outside. To take it outside. To understand the haq of the imam. Now let's say in the majlis, tomorrow you go to the haram of the imam. If you go inside the haram and everybody's there taking selfies... If you come to my house and you start taking selfies in my front room when I'm talking to you, what am I going to say? I'm going to say this person lacks adab. I'm not going to like it. You go to the haram of the imam. That imam who has everything that you need, he even has an upgrade to your phone. You're there standing there having a selfie, not realizing haqiqa. This is the haqiqa. Has the system, and if I dare say, has the system of Dajjal taken you so far? That you've lost all tamarqos and all ability to focus? Think about it. People are suffering in life because of a fact that they have a lack, a lack, ability, a lack of focus. There are people who can't go throughout the day without checking their phone. Salam on the Jews who have a Sabbath that for 25 hours they don't look at their phones. This is why they're more at peace than some of our brothers and sisters who cannot go for half an hour without looking at their phones. When a person wakes up in the morning, before even saying salam to the imam, they say salam to WhatsApp. And after saying salam to WhatsApp, then they go to Telegraph. And after Telegraph, the youth will look at Insta. And then after Insta, they come onto Facebook. And then by that time, you've wasted so much time, and your mind is scattered so much, that what happens? It removes you away from the essence, which is Tawheed. You see, in ingenious the way that they made it. All of these apps are there to move your mind from one thing to another thing to another thing. So then what happens? It's basically cheap pleasure. Intellectual pleasure. We're moving from one to another to another to another. You get bored, you quickly move on. You get move. What happens? It is 110% against spirituality completely. Be you a Buddhist, be you a Hindu, be you a Sufi, be you a Shia, be you a Sikh, Taoist. All of them teach one thing. Tamarkus, focus upon one thing. You're unable to do that. You're scattered. What happens? Suffering takes place. By default, suffering takes place. You begin to suffer. Why do you begin to suffer? You begin to suffer for a lack of unity. This is why Allah says Tawheed. Tawheed is not just La ilaha illallah. Tawheed is 
la ilaha illallah in the living form. What does that mean? That every ounce of your day and every moment of your life should be reflecting Tawheed. Tawheed means what? When you focus upon one thing, focus upon it properly. Don't scatter yourself. Because it only leads to destruction. Now remember that. Take it a step forward now. Where do we learn all of these things from? Hafiq has learned from the Imam. Let me give you another story. But look, what else blocks? So I want to come back to this. What blocks you? What blocks you are a number of things. Let me give you one. So you understand. One Remember what we said a number of days ago. Ibrahim became a Khalil because of three things. One of those three things was what? That he was very open to his guests. He would look around. He was hospitable. You know where that comes from? That comes from mercy. You find today that there's a lack of mercy amongst the Shia. Forget anybody else. We lack mercy. Hospitality. When a person comes to your city, in the olden days, what would they do? They'd be your guest for three days. You'd cook for them. Food would be coming over. You'd make sure that they're okay. You'd come and visit them. Today, we're so busy in our nine to five that what happens? If there's a guest, you ignore them. Your parents, you leave them. What are you doing? An injustice, a disbalance. Go back to the sixth Imam and see. He says, divide your day into four parts. If you are working the whole day and you have no time for God or your family, then that is known as jahl. You're a jahil because you're unable to balance your life. Islam teaches balance. But now come and see. What do we lose in all of this? We lose mercy. We lose compassion. Ibrahim had mercy. Ibrahim had compassion. So let me take you to a tradition. Tradition is this. Khan ibn Urwa is sick. The place is Kufa. The governor is Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. Muslim bin Aqil comes to Hani and he's taking refuge in his house. Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad says, I'm going to go and I'm going to visit Hani. Why? Hani's muqaddas. Let me see what's happening there. Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad goes. As he's coming to the house of Hani, Hani's lying there. He says, Muslim, this is the mother of all evil. Let's hatch a plan. You hide behind the door. When he comes in, I'll cough, you kill him. End of story. No Karbala, no killing, no nothing. One guy's gone, nothing else will happen. Muslim says, fine. Muslim goes behind the door. He's hiding there. Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad says to all of his men, stand outside. I'm going to go and visit Hani. Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad walks in. Hani ibn Urwah begins to cough. And he begins to cough. And he begins to cough. And he begins to cough. Muslim bin Aqil doesn't come out. Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad senses that there's something up, he quickly says his bye-byes and he gets out. Muslim bin Aqil comes out. Hani says, Muslim, I was coughing. You weren't attacking. He says, Hani, what can I do? I remembered the hadith of the Prophet. Do not ever cause terror, terrorize people. He goes, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad was disarmed. He came as a guest to you. It would be against the akhlaq of the Prophet for me to have attacked him. It is haram to cause terror to be a terrorist. There is no way if I'm following the seer of the Prophet, then I can be a terrorist. If I follow my Prophet, the pathway of my Prophet is love. This is why what does Imam say? When they were talking about Ma'awiyah, Imam emphasizes, even if the ends are lofty, there has to be just means. And I say this to all Muslims as well. Do not take the shortcut route. Why? Because your akhlaq needs to shine. Not because of the fact that, look, you could turn around and say, but look, the end goal is there in front of us. Let's just do whatever we need to do to get to the end. Today people say, maslahat. It's maslahat. Let's just do it. There's no problem. It's maslahat. It's not the case. Don't look at it like that. Islam doesn't teach us that. Had that been the case, Amir al muminin What does Malik al ashtar say when it comes to the Imam? Malik al ashtar is that person who's lofty. That Imam says Malik is a mountain that if the bird was to go, wouldn't be able to cross it. That's how lofty a mountain Malik is. Malik says to the Imam, he says, Mola, you know what this guy does? Ma'awiyah? He buys people. Now this is not Malik advising the Imam. Malik is telling us. And Imam is replying to tell us. Malik says, Mola, 
if you were just to get the gold and silver out, these guys would be falling on your feet, basically. What does the Imam say? He says, Malik, I can't do that. Why can't I do that? Because I'm here to implement the justice of God. And part of that justice, what does mercy dictate? When a young child, even if it's six months old, is running to grab a knife, and the mother stops that child, and that child is crying, and the mother is not allowing, and the child is thinking, how bad is my mother? It's not the fact that your mother is bad. It's the fact that your mother loves you so she prevents you from cutting yourself. Similarly, remember this. Don't ever use illegal means to get to a good end. Always remember the pathway is difficult, but it is the only pathway because the sirat is the sirat of wilaya. When you start accelerating on the sirat, then you come to the level in and of itself that you have the ability to move hurdles yourself out of the way if you wanted to. Sayyidul Shuhada, you go there, from his khaq you get shifa. Now tell me, doesn't the Imam have power himself to have saved himself from Karbala? Do you think that when his children are saying Alatash, the Imam doesn't have the ability to open up water? Do you think Abu al-Fadl Abbas, Bab al Hussein doesn't have the ability to say to Farad, come to me? If Abbas wanted to, he could have brought the entire water to the tent. He didn't need to go out. Why don't they do that? Mashiach of Allah. They believe that there's something lofty in the Mashiach. They don't change it. There's very few times you find that the Imam uses miracle to change destiny. And in fact, even when he does it for us, not for himself. Let me give you a story. Understand it from this. Allah does wahi to Musa. He says, Musa, I'm going to tell you where the most abid person in the world lives. What did Musa say? Musa says, Allah, please do. Now remember, to get to a maqam, you require humility. Even as a prophet. Humble humility. He wants to run. He wants to find out where this person is. So Allah gives him the address. He says, go to this, this, and this place. He goes there. When he walks in, he thinks to himself, is this the most abid person? You know what was happening? He saw Jibreel come, and Jibreel was saying, I'm going to take his eyesight away. The guy had leprosy. He was lying there paralyzed. His eyesight is going. He's unable to move. He's got marks on his body. He has pus coming out of his spots. And at that moment, his eyesight is taken away. Musa was expecting a guy with a huge musalla laid out. So Musa asks him, are you so-and-so? He says, yes. He says, brother, I'm mustajab al-da'wa. Ask me. I'll, I'll pray to Allah to give you eyesight back. You know what he replies? He said, no, thank you, Musa. Alhamdulillah. Shukr. I'm happy where I am. Musa thinks, what's happening here? He asks him the question. He says, oh person, what gives you so much conviction? Look at the state that you're in. Look at the eyesight is gone. What's the story here? You know what he replies? He smiles. He says, Musa, whatever hala Allah has put me in is for my benefit. Allah has given me a lot, much more than you can even quantify. He says, what do you mean? He says, from all of this village, right, Allah gave you my address, this city, this town, Whatever it was, Allah gave you my address. Do you know what Allah gave you my address for? Because I'm the only muwahid in this entire area. Allah has given me the ni'mah to understand tawheed. And this is something which is far more loftier than you can understand. If that is a man who is not ma'asum, then you can now understand why Hussein ibn Ali goes to Karbala. You can now understand. Look, let me put it another way. To pray at awwal waqt is the best thing, right? So let's say, for example, Vahar time comes. You pray awwal waqt to dhuhr. Otherwise, up to 50 minutes or so, it's still fadila. It's like fajr, 20, 21 minutes from the time of the adhan of fajr onwards. It's fadila time, right? But what happens? The best time to recite is awwal waqt. So for example, in the first four minutes of dhuhr, the first three minutes of, let's say, three, four, as fast as it takes you to recite a prayer. Awwal waqt, you recite the prayer. The imam... Let's say, if he recited right at the last moment, his prayer would still be accepted. But for the Imam, that's an insult to Allah. So what does the Imam do? He takes the best option. Right? Imam Hussein had an option to go to India. 
Imam Hussein had an option not to even fight Yazid. Imam Hussein had the option of Taqiyya. He didn't do that. What did Imam Hussein do? He went and he gave his life because the best thing to do, his awwal waqt salah, was to do, go to Karbala. You see, Imam sometimes takes the most difficult route. Whatever route the Imam takes, Mashiach of Allah bends in that direction. But here, know something. Imam is what? Imam wants to follow the way Allah wants everything to be done. Understand that. What is Ibrahim? Ibrahim is that person who is Sheikh Al-Anbiya. Why is he Sheikh Al-Anbiya? Why? Sheikh meaning what? Sheikh Al-Anbiya meaning he's basically the leader of all of the Anbiya. Why does he have that maqam for? Why does he have that maqam? The final thing about Ibrahim is this. Allah says, go and sacrifice your son. In the process of sacrificing, it gets to a stage where Allah says, stop. Stop. Ibrahim says, but I haven't finished. He says, no, stop. Here you've been ransomed. You're up to here. But Hussein is even further. When that Hussein comes, his eyes won't be tied. When that Hussein comes, he's not just going to sacrifice one son. Actually, he's going to sacrifice two sons. Hussein is something that if Ibrahim became Sheikh al -Anbiya, then Hussein's door became Bab al -Hawaj. Who's the door of Hussein? Abbas. We don't even know what Hussein is. If Abbas is like that, imagine what Hussein is like. This is why Sayyid al shuhada himself has said, whenever you go to Karbala, remember one thing, for as many times as you come to me, go to my Abbas as well. Imam Hussein likes it. When you go, if you go three times to Imam Hussein, go three times to Abul Fadl Abbas. But you know what? In fact, let me take a step further. Imam Hussein wants you to go to Abbas before you come to him. Why? Because he's Babel Hussein. He's the door. You've got to knock on the door. You've got to take ijazah from the door. No, can I go any further? Imam Hussein is so kareem. His heart ripped when Abbas's right hand fell. <laughs> His heart ripped when his right arm fell. Hussein doesn't hold anyone's favor on his shoulder. He made Abbas Babel Hussein. Go to Abbas first, then come to me. Let Abbas train you. Let Abbas train your heart. Look, I'm telling you secrets, if only you understood. When you go to Abu al-Fadl Abbas, the most important thing you ask him is to train you. Train your heart. To be able to humble yourself in front of Hussein. Why do you think Habib ibn Mubahir? Where is he buried? Where is Habib ibn Mubahir buried? Why is he buried there? Why is his ziyarah the same? As-salamu alayka ya. Abdul Salih. Al-Muti'u alillahi wa al-Rasulahi. Wa al-Amiru al-Mu'mayn. Why is that? Training. The purpose of all of these maqamat is that they're training you to come and understand the Mawla. If you're being trained by them, you're not going to take your phone in the haram, believe me. You're not going to be focusing on it, you'll be tunnel visioned. Do you know why you're going to be tunnel visioned? Because you know that your Mawla is there in front of you. And when you go there, people say, well, you know, we're invited. Everybody's invited. Everybody's invited, yes. But not everybody's accepted. There's a difference. Acceptance comes when the tears begin to flow from the eyes. Shall I give you an example? Now that we're on it, time is limited, but I'm going to give you a quick example. There was a Tajir from Tehran. He went to Mashhad for the day to the Ziyar of the Ektama. When he went in there, he realized that he wasn't there, his mind was everywhere. And no tears were coming in his eyes. So after a while he said, look, if the tears are not coming in my eyes, they're not worth it. Let me just go. The imam hasn't truly called me. So he will ask, you know, so-and-so goes to ziyarah. So-and-so is like this. So-and-so goes to Look, imam calls you. The idea is acceptance. How do you know the acceptance? It's the tears. That's the real idhan al dukhul. Is when the tears come into you, that means Mawla is saying, now come to me. 
your ziyan of Hussein can be accepted in this majlis. When the tears come into your eyes, Hussein is saying, come to me. So this man says, he says, look, I don't have any tears in my eyes. What do I do? It's not coming. He says, let me pack up and let me go. Maybe Hussein hasn't called. Maybe Imam Reza hasn't called me. What does he do? He gets up and he walks out. Books his ticket. Heads towards the airport. As he's heading towards the airport, he sees an old man. That old man has a cart. On that cart is a lot of goods there. He can't push. He comes, he says, Father, Uncle, can I help you? He says, Son, God bless you. He takes it and he begins to push. He says, Why are you carrying such a heavy weight? He says, My wife has asked me to make sure that I can raise enough money for the trove of my daughter that she's getting married. He thinks about it. He says, maybe I can help this person. He says, uncle, can I come to your house after helping him? Uncle's thinking, I don't really want to take him to my house because my house is not in a good condition. But he says, look, he's done so much. Let me take him. He says, I took him to my house. This man says, when I walked in, I could see that this house was in a really run-down situation. What does he do? He says, maybe I can help them. He takes out his checkbook. He says, take this as a idea from me. The man looks at it, begins to cry. He says, this is much more than I needed. He says, no problem, keep it. He gets up and he says, now give me the ijazah to go. The man says, son, I've got nothing to offer you. I couldn't even give you a cup of tea. He says, but son, I can only say one thing. May Imam Ali ibn Musar accept you. At the moment, that stage, his heart began to shake. He says, now Mola has accepted me with tears in his eyes. He goes running to the Imam and he begins to cry. And there's nothing holding his tears back. Why? Know something. Even if your tears dry up ever, just remember, do something for the Shia of, of Ahlul Bayt and you'll see Mola comes to your help like there's no tomorrow. My master is there to help you, but you've got to do something to ignite the flame. When is the flame ignited? When you do something for the Shia of Ahlul Bayt. No, let me take it a step further. Even if you help any of Allah's makhluk from the 7 billion people on earth, regardless of color, race, skin, language, religion, if you do that for the sake of your Imam, look and see what the Imam does for you. What does the Imam do for this person? Takes him into his domain. Why? What did he do? Made one person happy. Eighth Imam is what? What is the eighth Imam? Imam al Rauf, you think you can go to Mashhad and you can do an action and the Imam isn't going to repay you? Believe me, the Imam will give you much more. This is my humble suggestion to you. Look, we have a number of days. Even if one child brings one thing to the Majlis of Hussein just to distribute to people around him or her, Imagine how much barakah that is. There's enough barakah in sharing. If you only knew the value of a grape given, one grape, if that's all that you can afford, the value of one grape given to the azadar of Hussein, if you only knew the value of that, you would spend everything that you have for the zawar of Hussein, for the azadar of Hussein. Have you not seen Ahl Iraq, why they do that? Why they rub your feet? Why they rub your legs? Why they pick the dirt from the ground? I've physically seen, you've seen, they kiss your feet. Businessman with about a hundred properties in Baghdad is kissing your feet. Why is he kissing? He's saying because you're the Zahir of Hussein ibn Ali. Don't you understand the maqam of a Zahir of Hussein? Khidmah of the Zawar of Hussein will benefit seven generations of yours if only you know what the intention is. Brother, everything, brothers and sisters, everything comes down to your niya. You know who teaches you how to refine your niya? Your fourth imam. Which dua? Abu Hamdul Thamali. I don't have time to go into it. Inshallah, we'll discuss it tomorrow. Imam teaches 
a methodology to refine your niyyah, to make you aware. But we don't have time to go into it. Inshallah, tomorrow we'll go into it. Where is it found? In the dua. Everything you want is in the books of dua of the imam. Open it up and read it. Look at it and see what's inside of it. Look, if there's anything, we need to have these classes. Quran classes where you discuss in Quran. Classes to discuss dua. Classes to discuss the ziyar of the imams. But anyhow, inshallah we'll discuss it further tomorrow. Look, our time has come to an end. There's a lot of material that we discussed today, which was different from yesterday. But it was important to discuss this. Tomorrow we'll revert back again to what we were discussing tomorrow, yesterday. We'll discuss it tomorrow. If you go to Najaf, then you go to Karbala, Samarra, Kaabamiya, Baqi. When you go to all of these places, right, each one of these places has a distinct spirituality. In the words of Ayatollah Bahjad, he would say when somebody asks, he says that these are all fruits from the bar of Fatima. Each fruit has its own Ta'asir has its own effect on you. Today you go, some brothers are going, brothers in front of me will be going to Karbala. You'll get there on the 7th of Muharram, let's say. You'll go for Ashura. The most painful day of the entire year. When you look up, you see millions of people. Where are they going? They're going to Hussein. What do you see there? You see gold and you see silver. When you look inside, you see lighting, right? Similarly, you go to Samarra, what do you see? You see gold, dome. Why? All of these are flowers from the garden of Fatima. You go to Kadamiya, what do you see? You see two more flowers which are buried there. You go from there, you go to Mashhad. Gharib Tus, Gharib al Waraba, what do you see? Another flower from the garden of Fatima. You go to Baqi. The graves are demolished, but the Imams are together. You come to the grave of Rasulullah. Can I ask you a question? This garden that you talk about, where is Zahra's grave today? <laughs> At least you find one person lighting a candle outside Baqi. <laughs> Today, on, when you go to Karbala, on the day of Ashura, Shama, Gariba comes, you find that their children lighting candles on that night. They don't want Sakina to be all alone in the dark. They light candles and they go towards Farat with small candles. If you have that much care for the four-year-old granddaughter of Zahra, let me ask you a question. Is there a light on the grave of Zahra today? Candle maybe? Does somebody visit it? 1400 years have gone. The mother of all of the Imams today is still lonely. That's called sacrifice of a mother. She sacrificed herself so that in Kaadamiya, your two Imams have lighting. So that in Samara, there's a dome for your other Imams. So that in Najaf, her husband is okay. So that in Karbala, her son and his companions are okay. The Seder Zainab in Sham or Egypt is okay. That Sakina's grave has somewhere to go to. Every single person Zahra saved, you go to Qum, Masuma, Qum's grave is there. But then you look and you ask, where's that mother of Hussein's grave? Where's that mother of Hussein's grave? <laughs> Perhaps a voice from the grave comes. Can someone come and just light a small candle next to my grave? Right. The only person who goes to that grave is that person who Zahra remembered 
at the most painful moment of her life. You know what happened? Inshallah, we'll discuss this on the nights which go. They say, I wouldn't narrate it, but my heart is telling me that you need to know this. Inshallah, yesterday we began some of the musibah of Hur. We'll complete it today. But remember, Hur's nisbah is to Zahra. What guided him was her ihtiram. Remember, Zahra's ishq is such that it will guide anyone from the darkest hole out, from the darkest moments of your life. When you have no one, know that the mother of Hussein is with you. She's broken hearted and her back is bent and her rib is broken. If I tell you a tradition, one tradition says that her rib was broken in such a way that it was touching the back. I can't recite anymore. You know, when Khunfus came and he hit Zahra, another man was standing there. I won't mention his name. He says, Khunfus, you didn't hit her properly. Let me show you how to hit her. When he hit her on the arm, it says that when he hit her on the arm, I can't recite it anymore. Salam on Imam Hassan though. Eight-year-old boy comes running. He says, don't touch my mother. You know who helped his mother up? Hassan. This is why he used to cry more than Hussein. Why he saw it happening in front of him. Look, I can't say it anymore. You won't be able to take it. I won't be able to recite it. Maybe one day in Fatima when we're together we'll reside, but... <laughs> if you think Hussein's ribs were shattered, Miras came from Zahara. If you think Sakina's earrings were ripped, Miras came from Zahara. Remember when the head of Imam Hussein was there, that four-year-old girl says something. She says, Father, Shimmer slapped me on the face. But Father, I'm not going to cry, Father. I didn't cry. I heard my grandmother was also slapped in the face. <laughs> Look, I wish I could go on. Why do I mention her? Your voices are raised. This is the way Imam wants it. Now the blessing, may the blessings of the Imam come to you. you may your hajat be accepted. Allah protect the hijab of your women. Allah protect your sons and your daughters. Allah protect your parents if they're alive. Allah bless your parents if they passed away. Why? Because your mothers have fed you wilaya. That's why you're crying. Hur's nisbah to Zahra is what saved him. <laughs> Hussein gave something back. You heard yesterday, right? Old father. When he got to the body of his son, Hussein was sitting there. What does he say? He says, Hur, let it never be that an old father is alive and he has to go to the body of his young son. I won't say any more what happened at Asr time. But Imam Zain al Abidin just says one thing to his aunt. He says, Aunt, why is Karbala shaking for? She replies and she says, Look yourself and see, son. What does he do? Assalamu alaikum, ya Aba Abdullah. Hussein was on his knees, Ali Akbar was on his back. Hurnau says, Mola, I want to go into the battlefield. What do you see? You see a father whose back was broken, whose son was dead. 
that father begins to fight. A time comes, Hur is hit on the head, blood begins to flow. He calls for Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein comes. Imam Hussein holds no debt. What does he do? He says, Hur, let me give you something. What does he give? He takes a handkerchief out of his pocket. He says, this handkerchief is my mother Zahra's. He ties it on the head of Hur. Let me say one thing. Sayyid al-Shahada, in a couple of hours, there's an arrow that's going to go into Ali Asghar's neck. You're going to need this handkerchief to tie it. Why? Because from one ear to the other. Madam Hussain. Be seated, brother. Please be seated. only five minutes. We are reciting a no and then slot and shall Karbalachopeya lekeda hona vaktereya koine beaka meleka Karbalachopeya lekeda hona vaktereya koine beaka meleka Tendi pupia te mama da saeja de seva koine beaka meleka tendi pupia te mama da saeja de seva koine beaka meleka Kasamita jo nahi lekhiya Undi shadi racha bethha Kasamita jo nahi lekhiya Undi shadi racha bethha Undi shagan mana bethha Unku sera pava bethha Tendi pen in the atate Hona Range in a coine, Beaka Melica Carbalito Pea Lekeda Hona Vactor, a coine, Beaka Melica Lagin other regae Ujidi Tendi Akber Saniku. Like another gay Ujidi, Tende Yusef Saniku, Ummatne Rajalutia, Akbar di Jamaniku, Matende Akbar di Koirasmea da Koine, Beaka Melika, Karbalitopea Lekeda. Brothers and sisters, we are having a break for Salat. And after Salat, inshallah, uh, the first reciter will be Brother Abbas Khusru, and then Dr. Ali Yaseen, and then Brother Hassan, and then after Brother Hadri, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair.
ای جگر فاطمنون پارسی ای جگر فاطمنون پارسی عرش فاوفین بالا گوش وارسی شام دساکن و تناوارسی زینب پرچم باشنن گارسی اغده گشا رگای درد دوا رگای اتریل گبرون گلوی راندی گلد مرم شمع حرم خاندی خردا جا گبر ها می پر واندی کم سن آجز دسدی واندی اغده گشا رگایا در دوا رگایا اغده گشا رگایا در دوا رگایا بیزن او خالو خطو و آشگوک مکتب و مقصد و آشگوک من زلت بی حد و آشگوک شامیده که گم بد و آشگوک اغده گشا رگایا در دوا رگایا فاطم خو رگایا فاطم خو رگایا سن او خانم سن کی تنور خاص و آم اشگو و احسن بیوروب اوت امام آل نون و پوب زینب علیه ها سلام سید از اصلر سننس وان شام کم دیوار احساس چو خیسلر سنین کم دیوار احساس چو خیسلر سنین هر احد و ناس چو خیسلر سنین رنگ گاچان یاس چو خیس لرسنی حضرت عباس چو خیس لرسنی اغده گشا رگایا در دوا رگایا کفری خان رگایا چوخدار خان رگایا قلبی اصن رگایا قلبی اصن رگایا عشق بها رگایا روح صفا رگایا یلدا گالان رگایا شامی آلان رگایا ناو بغزن رگایا چختل زن رگایا صلی الله علیه یا ابا عبدالله صلوات الله محمد و آل محمد Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters, for joining the martyrdom tonight. Tonight is devoted to the people who ask forgiveness from Imam Hussein. Joined Imam Hussein in the last day from the enemies. And ask for forgiveness and is a story of all of us mostly 
And obviously we all ask him tonight for forgiveness. Tonight is devoted to Hazrat Hur. And we are all asking Almighty God and Masumin for forgiveness. Asking like Hur asked tonight, Sayyidina Ya Hussein. 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 Yusuf Zahraz Shoma Por Shodam. Tauke Asire To Shodam Hor Shodam. As Dele Doshman Besuyat Par Zadam. Oh, Madame Ohal Barin Dar Zadam. Sayyidina Ya Hussein, Sayyidina Ya Hussein, Sayyidina Ya Hussein, Sayyidina Ya Hussein. Amade am tan ke kabulam kuni. خاک ره آل رسولم کنی هر پشیمان تو ام یا حسین دست به دامان تو ام یا حسین سیدنا یا حسین سیدنا Ya Hussein, Sayyidina Ya Hussein, <laughs> Sayyidina Ya Hussein. Yek nega hap kan hame hastam begir, ey pesare ko etme dastam begir, Ruz. <تصفيق> روز نخستین به تو دل باختم در دل من بودی و نشناختم سیدنا یا حسین سیدنا یا حسین سیدنا حسین سیدنا یا حسین دست نیاز من و دامان تو رو کوه نگاه من و دامان تو ناله ی الاف بود بر لبم تا صف محشد خجل از اینبم سیدنا یا حسین سیدنا یا حسین سیدنا یا حسین سیدنا یا حسین روی علی اکبر تو دیدنی دست علم دار تو بوسیدنی مهر تو همراه وجود من است هستی من خون گلوی من سیدنا یا حسین سیدنا یا حسین سیدنا یا حسین سیدنا یا حسین چه میشه که کشته ی راحت شوم خای که قدم های سپاهت شوم هر ریاهی به درت آمده 
فاترس بی بال و پرد آمده سیدنا یا حسین سیدنا یا حسین سیدنا یا حسین سیدنا یا حسین با نگه خیش کمالم بده و از کرم خود پر و بالم بده بال من از غیوه شمشیر هاست سینه تنگم سپر تیر هاست سیدنا یا حسین سیدنا یا حسین سیدنا یا حسین سیدنا یا حسین مقتل خون اوج کمال من است تیر محبت پر و بال من است بال بده فترس دیگر شوم توتی گهواره اصفر شوم سیدنا یا حسین سیدنا یا حسین سیدنا یا حسین سیدنا یا حسین یوسف زهرا ز شما پر شدم تا که اسیر تو شدم هر شدم از دل دشمن به سویت پر زدم آمدم و حلق به این در زدم سیدنا یا حسین سید نایا حسین سید نایا حسین سید نایا حسین سلامات اللهم صل على محمد و آل محمد تنکیو چرمن محبوب for giving me the opportunity to recite Thank you very much. Thank you our attendees in Zoom and also in the mosque for listening. در کا وقت ہے شبیر کی ہے صدا چور زخموں سے بدن ہو گیا اما میرا اپنی آغوش میں اب مجھ کو چھپا لو اما ارے دھوپ ہے اپنی ابا آن کے ڈالو اما گرم ریتی پا میں گرتا ہوں سنبھالو اما گرم ریتی پا میں گرتا ہوں سنبھالو اما تھک گیا لاشیں اٹھا کر میں برے لشکر کی لاش قاسم کی میں لایا ہوں کبھی اکبر کی خود بنائی ہے لہد میں نے علی اصغر کی دو تسلی مجھے سینے 
से लगा लो अम्मा गर्म रेती पम गिरता हूँ संभालो अम्मा गर्म रेती पम गिरता हूँ संभालो अम्मा तीर तलवार से खंजर से बदन जख्मी है खकुड़ाती है तो जख्मों में चुभन होती है मेरे जख्मों से मेरे दिल का लहू जारी है अपनी चादर को मेरे जख मोपे डालो अम्मा गर्म रेती पम गिरता हूँ संभालो अम्मा गर्म रेती पम गिरता हूँ मेरा बास खफा हो गया अम्मा मुझसे वो नहीं आ या उठा ला या था बाजू उसके अब का अब एक काम करे नारे जाके मेरे रूठे हुए भाई को मना लो अम्मा गर्म रेती पम गिरता हूँ संभालो अम्मा गर्म रेती पम गिरता चक्किया पी सी है गोदी मैं बिठा कर मुझको जागती रह तीती गोदी में सुला कर मुझको लोरिया दे तीती झूले में झुला कर मुझको एक दफा गो में फिर अप सुला लो अम्मा गर्म रेती पम गिरता हूँ संभालो अम्मा गर्म रेती पम और कुछ देर का मेहमा हूँ तुम पास रहो रेत जख्मो में है आंचल से इसे साफ करो आई रो ने की आवास की ना देखो जाओ तुम जा के सकी ना को संभालो अम्मा गर्म रेती पम गिरता हूँ संभालो अम्मा गर्म रेती पम गिरता देखो वो आग लगी शाम गरीबा आई देखो घबरा के निकल आई मेरी माँ जाई देखो बे ओ शकीना का बड़ा है भाई जाओ सजाद को शोलो से निकालो अम्मा गर्म रेती पम गिरता हूँ संभालो अम्मा है गुजारिश मेरी तुमसे तो अब इतनी मादर अम्मा बाबा की कसम ढा पुलो मुँह पर चादर देखा जाए गाना अब तुम से ये खूनी मंजर कत्ल होता हूँ गाहो को हटा लो अम्मा 
कर्म रेते पामे गिरता तू संभालो अम्मा कर्म रेते पामे गिरता तू संभालो अम्मा चलो वन ای مظهر اف خدا پر گناهکار آمد ای مظهر اف خدا پر گناهکار آمد دست از دو عالم شست و از بحر سار آمد من بندت را بندم من از رخت شرمندم در پای تو پایندم یار تو هم تا زندم دل از دل و جان کندم لطفی که من در ماندم حسین 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 در مانده ای در محضرت با چشم خون بار آمده در مانده ای در محضرت با چشم خون بار آمده ای مظهر اف خدا پر گناه کار آمده پر گناه کار آمده من عاشق روی تو هم زنجیری موی تو هم من عاشق روی تو هم زنجیری موی تو هم گرم حیاهوی تو هم خاک سر کوی تو هم لب تشنه جوی تو هم سرباز اردوی تو هم اینک برای یاریت یار آمده یار آمده ای مظهر اف خدا پر گناه کار آمده حسین 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 زار و پریشان آمدم با جرم و سیان آمدم با چشم گریان آمدم در کوی جانان آمدم بر دادن جان آمدم در بحر غفران آمدم این اشک هم یا حسین بار گناه هم یا حسین من بی پناهم یا حسین دادی تو را هم یا حسین دادی تو را هم یا حسین 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 حسین
یابن زهرا منم قر گناه کار تو یابن زهرا منم قر گناه کار تو شده در کربلا دلم گرفتار تو بردرت بنده ام از تو شرمنده ام بردرت بنده ام از تو شرمنده ام مولا یا حسین 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 من به دشت بلا راه تو بستم حسین من به دشت بلا راه تو بستم حسین خجل از مادرت فاطمه هستم حسین دارم این زمزمه به سر فاطمه مولا یا حسین 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 سیدی سیدی عزیز زهرا حسین سیدی سیدی عزیز زهرا حسین مظهر رحمت خدا توی یا حسین بلی اکبرت بلی اکبرت بلی اسخرد مولا یا حسین مولا یا حسین مولا یا حسین من که پا تا سر از شرم تو آبم حسین داغ لبهای تو کرده کبابم حسین در حرم از اتش از خر کرده قش در حرم از اتش از خر از کرده قش مولا یا حسین مولا یا حسین مولا یا حسین مولا یا حسین سلام صدا ہر عشق ہے جذبہ نصرت کا یوں حق کی طرف آ جانے کا حاصل ہے ابھی تک ایک موقع پہچان زمین اور دل کی صدا اس ماتم میں شامل ہو جا شبیر بلاتے ہیں اب تک گر ہر ہو کہیں تو آ جائے زہرا کی دعا ہے ماتم یہ ماتم کیسے رک جائے زہرا ماتم یہ ماتم کیسے رک جائے 
इस पर चमके अजमत के लिए अब्बास ने बाजू दे डाले इस पर चमके अजमत के लिए अब्बास ने बाजू दे डाले इस पर चमकी इज्जत के लिए गाजीन सहे दल पर भाले गाजीन सहे दल पर भाले इस पर चम के मशकी जा से लिपटे है सकीना के नाले अब्बास अली का परचम है ये परचम कैसे झक जाए लहरा की दुआ है ये मातम के मातम कैसे रुक जाए सालार हुसैन क्या कहना मैं राज वफा सरताज वफा सालार हुसैन क्या कहना मैं राज वफा सरताज वफा हर माश तड़पती है अब तक साहिल से जो तू पलटा प्यासा साहिल से जो तू पलटा प्यासा बाहक में हुसैनी जंग न की हर बार सहा हर जुल्म सहा आगोश में तब तह फिक्र थी क्या सी न सकी न रह जाए सहरा की दुआ है ये मातम ये मातम कैसे रुक जाए यासैन सैदीन السلام علیکا یا ابن فاطمہ تا سیدہ تل نساء العالمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکات السلام علیکا یا غریب الغربا السلام علیکا یا مؤمن الزوای و الفقا السلام علیکا یا مغیث الشیعت و زوار فی یوم جزا السلام علیکا یا نیس النفوس السلام علیکا یا المدفون فی الارد توس السلام علیکا و درک السبات و ابنائی کا ارکبات و رحمت اللہ و برکات السلام علیکا یا مولانا صاحب اسر الزمان اللمان اللمان من فتنت الزمان السلام علیکا یا خلیفت الرمان السلام علیکا یا شریک القرآن السلام علیکا یا امام الانس والجان السلام علیکا یا قائم الكفر و تویان السلام علیکہ یا دافع ظلم مردوان اجل اللہ فرجک وسال اللہ مخرجک وجعل نظورک و انصارک و رحمت اللہ و برکات صلوات برکات